ween these guys. Don't get too close to my fantasy. Don't be afraid to clutch the hand of your creator. Don't like Frank Zappa, like, at all. What? So, right off the bat, if you don't know who Ween are, I'm not really sure how to describe them to anyone who hasn't already heard their stuff. They are a rather strange band. They're sort of a joke band. But leaving it at that would not be fair to them at all. They're not Weird Al or, I don't know, The Lonely Island. In a way, they're closer to someone like Tenacious D insofar as they kind of simultaneously pay homage to and parody the music that they love. But where Tenacious D are much more solely hard rock focused and are much more obviously comedic, Ween are less stylistically limited, covering pretty much every genre out there. And they're not just comedic. Like, I don't find this song actively laugh out loud funny. And they also have plenty of music which is actually just quite earnest. One kiss, one kiss of young lily white lips. I might simply say that they are the ultimate pastiche band. They do pastiches, that's their main thing. Which in many ways makes them the kind of like ultimate 90s successor to the Beatles. Except, and this bears repeating a lot, they are weirder. They are much weirder. I'm waving my dick in the wind. HIV. You're just a piece of me. If I was just going to recommend one album by them, it would probably be The Mollusk. I think it's kind of generally thought of as one of their best. It's like quite diverse, but also very accessible. Go check it out if you don't know any of their music already. And then Frank Zappa, well, he's also quite strange and he hardly needs an introduction really. Though he's not amongst the most commercially successful artists of the 20th century, he's definitely amongst the most influential and impactful and just like downright prolific. He was right there at the start of rock music and he just put out a colossal amount of music over like four decades. Just loads of music through the years. And on top of that, loads of brilliant musicians have played with him. Steve Vai, Terry Bozio, Vinnie Kalawata? Vinnie Kalawata? He wasn't just a brilliant musician either. He had lots to say on politics, religion, current affairs, culture, society. And unlike, I think, virtually any other musician who did the same, he was actually really well informed and insightful when he spoke on these topics. I might not personally agree with his like libertarian politics, but he's clearly a smart guy. Our families are under attack from people like you with these lyrics. John, you, know? you don't have to buy them. Mr. Mr. Zappa, well, that, could I, I make a statement sure. about national defense? Yeah. The biggest threat to America today is not communism. It's moving America toward a fascist theocracy. And everything that's happened during the Reagan administration is steering us right down that path. Oh, Mr. Mr. Zappa, do, yes, you, do, Mr. You, Zappa. do you really think? I mean, <laughs> I all, really kidding, think that. all kidding aside, in this country, with the permissiveness that we are moving toward a fascist theocracy, anything goes. Well, we you know, do, you, do you think things... If, somehow, you've never listened to any Zappa, I wouldn't even really know where to recommend you start. You go to your streaming platform of choice and listen to the top songs there, I guess. It's still not really going to do his entire career much justice, but it'll have to do. Or just go listen to Hot Rats. If you do that, you will at least come to understand that, like Ween, he put his sense of humour right at the forefront of his music. His music is funny, it's wacky, it's zany, and also, like Ween, Zappa wrote music in a wide range of musical genres and styles. You can't really pin him down to just one thing, unless that thing is just Zappa music. You could call him prog, and a lot of people do, but I think he's something a little bit different. He's not jazz fusion, he's not classical, he's not hard rock, and he's not doo-wop. But he is also all of those things, sometimes simultaneously. Yeah, he just makes Zappa music. Anyway, there are a lot of similarities between Frank Zappa and Ween then. It's a commonly drawn comparison made by fans and critics alike, and it feels quite natural to talk about them in the same breath. I mean, come on, listen to Ween. You smoke. Mr. Richard Smoker
Zappa. And then listen to Zappa. Anyway, he goes, are you into SM? I go, oh, right. Could you, like, just picture me in, a, like, a leather teddy? But it's not actually a comparison that Ween themselves are all that keen on. Both Dean and Gene Ween, real names Mickey Melchionda and Aaron Freeman, have at points expressed like quite strong distaste at the comparison and a general dislike for Zappa's music. Mickey, or Dean Ween, and I think I'll stick to their fake band names, Dean Ween then has said that he thinks Zappa is too sarcastic, too insincere, whereas he sees Ween as expressing a genuine love for the music that they are pastiching. He has also compared Zappa unfavorably to both Prince and the Beatles, both of whom are, according to him, much better examples of artists who have a sense of humor without being just overly acerbic. And then Gene Ween, my god it feels ridiculous talking about Gene and Dean Ween, but I guess that is the point, right? Gene Ween has said that he likes Zappa's stuff with the Mothers of Invention a little bit, but still isn't a fan of his broader work. This all seems a bit weird, right? At least on first glance. Are the guys who wrote such classics as HIV Song and Piss Up A Rope? Hang on your knees, you big booty bitch. <laughs> Are they really expecting us to believe that Zappa, who wrote Bobby Brown Goes Down and Catholic Girls, that he is too sarcastic and insincere for them? Like, the difference between their sense of humour and Zappa's doesn't really seem that huge, right? They seem pretty adjacent in terms of sensibility, no? Hmm, yeah. I think there are a lot of similarities, but I do you think I get what they're saying, actually? I think that they're right to identify this problem in Zappa's music, and it is something I've often thought myself. Now, just to be clear, I do like Zappa, I like loads of his music, and I also do find plenty of it funny, but I also do just have a limited amount of patience for him. I think I have the exact same problem with Zappa that Ween do. Like for all Ween's weirdness and their sarcasm, their satire and jokes, their sometimes, well actually quite often, infantile edginess, Policies they share with Zappa, they're not really cruel or mocking. There even seems to me to be some level of self-deprecation in what they do, whereas Zappa really does just seem to mock people. Ween a kind of the carnivalesque in its purest musical form, I think. Their angle seems to be, the world is a weird place. We're all weird. Society, people, culture, it's all kind of bullshit and nothing is sacred. And hey, maybe you are stupid, but so are we. Anyway, here's a song we wrote about a whale with a polka dot tail. Did you ever see a whale with a polka dot tail? Oh, and here's another one about spinal meningitis. Zappa's angle is actually granted quite similar, but he goes much heavier on the whole you are stupid bit, and he goes further by clearly thinking you are stupid, but I am not. And largely because of that attitude, there's little in the way of sensitivity in Zappa's music outside of his instrumental stuff, which is sometimes at least a different story. But anything, as far as I know by Zappa, anything with lyrics is like 100% sarcastic or ironic or mocking or, or something like in that general family. So as I just said, listening to Zappa because of that feels like listening to a guy who not only thinks he's smarter than everyone else, but specifically also thinks that everyone else is very stupid. He hasn't been while I commit my social suicide, I'm a dancing fool. In fact, quite often he seems to think that everyone else is stupid pretty much solely by virtue of being a vulnerable human being. In saying all of this, part of the issue is that I think that Zappa probably was smarter than maybe not everyone else, but a lot of people. He was a genuinely very smart guy. But in the words of the dude, You're not wrong, Walter. You're just an asshole. And that's honestly sometimes how I feel listening to Zappa's music. It's like, I get the point. You're not wrong, but you are kind of an asshole. And to be fair, I'm sure that his reaction to me thinking this would be the same as Walter's, really. Okay, then. If you've heard any of the stories about how Zappa would treat his touring musicians and his infamously tough hiring interviews. How brutal he was on me. I couldn't even believe it. He was so, he made it so difficult. And I said, oh, I can't do that. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, I hear Linda Ronstadt is looking for a guitar player. <laughs> You'd be even more inclined to think, yeah, 
this guy thinks he's hot shit. And he kind of was. Everyone who worked with him seems to have ultimately thought very highly of him and they got a lot out of their working relationship. But he was always cool. He was always, he was always great. There was, there was a lot but that problem of insincerity and kind of a lack of vulnerability, that problem still remains. And if I'm going to take it a little bit further, I actually think there's a little bit more to it all personally. I might be way off base here and I'm in no real position to psychoanalyze Zappa based on my interpretation of his music. So feel free to discount what I'm about to say. But listening to Zappa's music, it can sometimes, at times, maybe, feel slightly, to me, personally, look at me hedging my statements in preparation for the flame war I might be citing here, I feel that maybe Frank's insincerity and his sarcasm and cynicism isn't just a result of him feeling, possibly with some justification, that he's above other people and other genres, but also maybe a slight fear of being vulnerable. I know, I know, who am I to say this right? Bear with me, his cartoonish wackiness, which is invariably used to, let's be honest, just shit on everyone else, is his primary mode of expression. When it comes to his lyrics, it's his sole mode of expression. It does often feel to me almost like a preemptive self-defensiveness, like, yeah, sure, my music is off-putting and weird to most people, but that's the point. I, I don't even care if you like it, to be honest. And maybe it is just me. Actually, no, I shouldn't say that, because I know it's not just me. I've heard and read other people say this, but with Zappa, I'm often reminded of the sort of obnoxious wannabe class clown who annoys everyone with weird, often unfunny jokes, repeated a lot, and when people get annoyed, he's kind of sat there going, ha, joke's on you, that was the point. I was trying to be annoying, but we are still sat there being annoyed with him, you know? I mean, if you're trying to be annoying, that still means you're annoying. This doesn't mean you get to escape that problem, you're still annoying. And I understand that everything I'm saying here sounds really pejorative. That's not really my intention. I'm, I'm kind of framing it maybe a bit more negatively than I should, but I'm just trying to express myself clearly because I, I know that a lot of people feel this way about Zappa and I certainly do. Um, and look, again, I can't prove it either way, can I? But whether or not it is true to say that he was afraid of expressing any sort of vulnerability in his music, I can certainly say that it bugs me that there's so little of it in his music. As I said earlier, I think there's more of that in his instrumental stuff, which is still wacky and out there, but at least it comes across to me as more earnest. There's, there's less of that kind of just in your face, stubborn contrarianism. But when every single song, and this guy put out a lot of music, every single song is some sort of like childish, mocking, silly thing. And there's hardly even a single moment of, I don't know, a love song, a song about something normal or heartfelt, or even much of a feeling of self-reflection or self-deprecation. Well, I can't help but think, what is he so scared of? Is it so hard to just write a positive song or be vulnerable? Because making art, any sort of art is scary and it's really putting yourself on the line and being vulnerable to the world. It's what makes any mode of artistic expression interesting and valuable. And I just feel like Frank's music misses something vital and important by not having much of that. I don't really get much in the way of vulnerability in his songwriting. And because of that, I just don't get as much from his songwriting as I sort of wish I did. Now, as I've said, he did do loads of improvisational and instrumental stuff live and in the studio where he'd really push himself and his skills, taking risks in those kind of situations. And that, well, that really is being vulnerable. Although even there, like a lot of his instrumental compositions sound still a little bit mocking and sarcastic to me. I, I just can't get past it with Zappa. Smug aura mocks me. It's evil, Charlie. But the point is that it means for me, Frank's music ends up being far more limited in scope and impact than it should on paper. He covers so much ground. He's undoubtedly one of the greatest like rock musicians or even more broadly just musicians full stop of the 20th century. There's so much sophistication and brilliance in his music, but to me a lot of it feels very similar because it's all like emotionally so similar. It's virtually all cynicism and wacky weirdness. And for some people that's great. They just don't care or they actively really like that Zappa mostly sticks to that sort of thing. As I've already said, 
I do like plenty of his stuff, but there comes a point quite quickly where I've just had enough of his shtick. And that's what it is, isn't it, really? His shtick. Like, everyone, every artist has their thing that they do. Even very diverse artists, for the most part, have, like, a preferred emotion they'll hit on, or a limited tonal palette, or whatever. And Zappa, in spite of his, like, musical depth and breadth, has his very quite limited emotional range. And you know what? That's fine, isn't it, really? And you know what? You might just say that I don't get Zappa, which is one of the preferred replies from what I've seen from Zappa fans when people say they don't really like his music. I might be happy to accept that, but I think I do get him. I just think he was never really going to be amongst my favourites. And that's fine too, right? You know, Frank Zappa's music wasn't made for me. He made it for his own reasons. And my personal opinion on his music's not the most important thing in the world. Right, time to sum up. In essence, the general point is I do agree with Ween, basically. I think I get what they're saying with Zappa. And I have to say that I do like Ween quite a bit. Certainly more than I enjoy Zappa. Even though I reckon that Zappa was more talented or skilled as a musician, whatever that might mean. Ween aren't one of my most absolute favourite bands, but I find them really hard to resist. They're very weird, but they are strangely wholesome. There's a sort of we're one of you vibes, just weirdos having fun. Maybe I shouldn't identify as strongly with that as I do, but you know, they seem like nice guys, which might be hard to believe from a band that sings about waving their dicks in the wind and like being a serial killer and stuff like that, but what are you gonna do? Oh, and also, one last aside that I think is quite interesting, Tim Heidecker, the comedian, actor, and musician best known for being in Tim and Eric, is also an unexpected Zappa hater. I'm personally a huge Tim Heidecker fan, and I recently saw him live, and he definitely seems like someone who'd appreciate Zappa, at least on some level. <laughs> But he doesn't really, and like Ween, he doesn't enjoy being compared to Zappa at all. Unfortunately, in the interview where he does talk about this, he doesn't really fully explain his objection, so I'm not going to go into it loads, but hey, it's interesting, and I suspect there might be similar reasons behind his distaste for Zappa as there is with Ween. As a final summing up, and I guess this is kind of the message of the video, I found a funny bit of a discussion about Heidecker's comments on the Zappa subreddit, where people were saying how disappointing it was that he doesn't seem to like or get Zappa. And there's probably quite a big overlap between Tim Heidecker and Frank Zappa's uh, fan base, with some of them saying that it's a shame that Heidecker is so wrong on this. Honestly, guys, come on chill out a bit. He just doesn't like Zappa that much. It's not really a big deal. It doesn't make him wrong. It's not like a shame or a disappointment that he's not into the music you like. Can we all please try to remember that this is all just music? I'm sure we all, in fact, no, we definitely all love plenty of music that someone else out there, someone probably quite close to you, is going to hate. And that's obviously just always going to be the case. You can't come at disagreements and taste with this sort of petulant attitude. There's nothing special about your taste in music. Like, so what if someone isn't that keen on your favorite artist? Your enjoyment of them shouldn't be contingent upon what someone who you've never even met thinks. We're not all gonna agree. So I guess I'm partly saying, please bear that in mind if you think I'm way off base about Zapper in this video. If you're writing up a comment now and you're just like angrily saying that I'm a moron, just, you know, well, I'd do it if you want, I don't really care, but you know, it's not going to be very productive. Anyway, see ya. There's nothing for you there. <laughs> what are you doing?